scientists have discovered a new type of wood that could be highly efficient at storing carbon. Tulip trees have a completely different wood structure than other tree species, according to research by scientists from the Jogelonian University and the University of Cambridge. This wood seems to be particularly efficient at storing carbon. This discovery could open up new possibilities for improving carbon sequestration in newly planted forests. Tulip trees are popular in gardens because of their beauty. They are related to magnolias and can reach heights of over 60 meters. They can be found naturally in North America, Liriodendron tulipifer, and in China and Vietnam, Liriodendron chinans. The trunks of the former species were used by the indigenous people of North America to make canoes. Indians also made a medicinal drink from the roots of the tree. Today, tulip trees are used to make furniture. In new research, scientists have discovered that these trees have a unique type of wood that does not match the wood of either deciduous or coniferous trees. The results and description of the research were published in the journal New Phytologist. Scientists from the Jogelonian University and the University of Cambridge conducted a study of the microscopic structure of wood from some of the most famous trees and shrubs in the world. They analyzed a total of 33 species. The study aimed to learn how the structure of wood evolved in coniferous and deciduous wood. The scientists also checked the structure of macrofibrils, fibrous structures with a diameter of 10 to 40 nm that make up wood. Using a low temperature scanning electron microscope, they found that two living species of tulip trees have significantly larger macrofibrils than the other species studied. We showed that tulip trees have an intermediate macrofibril structure which is significantly different from the structure of softwood or hardwood. These species diverged from magnolia trees about 30 to 50 million years ago, which coincided with a sharp drop in atmospheric CO2. This may help explain why tulip trees are so effective at storing carbon, said Dr. Jan Lizakowski from the Department of Plant Biotechnology at the Faculty of Biochemistry, Biophysics and Biotechnology of the Jogelonian University. It is known that both species of tulip trees are exceptionally efficient at binding carbon, and their enlarged macrofibril structure may be an adaptation that helps them more easily capture and store larger amounts of carbon when the availability of atmospheric carbon is limited. Tulip trees may prove useful in carbon capturing plantations. Some countries in East Asia are already using plantations of these trees for effective carbon binding, and we now believe that this may be related to their newly discovered wood structure, noted Lizakowski. The researcher from the Jogelonian University admitted that despite the importance of trees, we know little about how wood structure evolves and adapts to the external environment. The main building blocks of wood are secondary cell walls. The architecture of these cell walls gives wood the density and strength that we rely on in structures. Secondary cell walls are also the largest carbon repository in the biosphere, which makes understanding their diversity even more important to advance our carbon capture programs to mitigate climate change, Lizakowski emphasized. Studying wood ultrastructure is crucial for various applications, including wood processing, materials science, and understanding ecological and evolutionary aspects of trees. Understanding the biology behind tree growth is also valuable information for calculating carbon capture. Great news for the balding. This success of scientists may herald a breakthrough. Biotechnologists from Japan have managed to obtain fully functional mouse hair follicles in a laboratory culture. This is definitely good news for people struggling with baldness. The scientist's achievement may open the way to regenerative baldness therapies, as well as drug testing and research on hair growth disorders. The hair
hair follicles were grown by a team of researchers from Yokohama National University in Japan. The formation of hair follicles during the development of the organism has been studied for several decades, but it has not yet been possible to recreate it under artificial conditions. Recently, however, there have been further successes in creating so-called organoids, miniature models of various organs. Such structures are used, among other things, to study diseases, potential therapies, and organ development. Organoids have become a promising tool for understanding the mechanism of hair follicle formation in vitro, explains Professor Tatsuto Kayama, author of the paper published in the journal Science Advances. The researchers used two types of mouse embryonic stem cells placed on a special substrate that controlled their growth. They developed hair follicles with hair shafts with almost 100% efficiency. The researchers also added a substance that stimulates the development of pigment-forming cells, melanocytes, which gave the hair germs their color. In the next step, they implanted the grown follicles into the skin of the mice, obtaining subsequent cycles of hair growth. This achievement may bring tangible benefits to many people over time. The researchers explain that the follicles they created will allow for better research on drugs that stimulate hair growth and even the regeneration of lost follicles. In addition, the knowledge they have gained will help in research on the development of other organs. The Japanese team has already announced the next, key step. In the next stage, we want to use human cells and work on drugs and methods in the field of regenerative medicine, says Professor Junji Fukuda, one of the researchers.